Well, one, I, I appreciate everybody being on. I appreciate uh, those of you that were on to cover Coach Williams' um, press conference, which I thought was so typically Coach Williams. Um, and the place means so much to him. He has meant so much to this place. And it gave him a great opportunity to reflect on his time here as our head coach. It gave him the opportunity to, to thank some people. It, um, uh, you know, it's, and it was a tough, really tough call for him to make that choice that uh, he was going to step away. And I have tremendous respect for him because as you heard on the call, you know, he, he's, he is a great coach and that's all he's ever done, but he didn't feel like he was connecting and getting out of the players, everything that uh, they had in them. And because of that, he decided that um, it'd be better to let somebody else do it. And I, I was really glad that he was able to express that to you guys. And I appreciate it. And I know that uh, Kirsch really didn't want to limit questions, but I just didn't think it was right for a coach to be there. I wanted to be there. And I thought even his kids were going to be there that we'd be answering questions about, okay, what's next. And uh, so I, I, I'm glad it went that way. So Thank you for uh, keeping everything focused on coach. And so, so now, I mean, I can open up the questions or I give you some of my initial thoughts on, on where we're headed and why don't I do that first. Um, right now, um, you know, I, I believe we've got the, the best job in college basketball and um, this job doesn't come open very often. And we need to spend a great deal of time thinking about who is the right person right now. And I do think that, you know, the often used word is fit. I think that is part of it. And I think time and circumstance is all part of that as well. Um, the history and tradition of here is winning. The, uh, it's, we've had it in the family for a long period of time. And uh, that is important, but it's not the only factor in trying to make a decision um, like this. And so at this point, we are we're not going to have a search committee. Uh, it's going to be myself and the chancellor uh, doing all of the work and the research and attempting to identify candidates that uh, we think make sense for the university at this point. And then we'll make uh, recommendations to uh, our board of trustees. Um, that doesn't mean we're not going to have all kinds of help from outside. Um, there's a number of people, a number of Carolina people that are in the basketball business. I have tremendous respect for them. I've certainly talked to many of them already. Um, so understanding the, the basketball landscape in general, Carolina specifically, and uh, relying on those folks, many of which played here, um, that's who I will be relying on for information and, and insight. And then ultimately, the chancellor and I will make that recommendation to, uh, to the board. So why don't I stop there and um, Kirsch, we can go to specific questions. Yep. First question, Aaron Beard, then CL Brown. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, Bubba. Thanks for doing this. Um, I was curious. I mean, I guess it's never a specific time frame you can ever necessarily put on it. But do you have any type of time frame or timeline you hope to have something in place? And also, how does it work in terms of Roy Williams has been around college basketball a long time. He knows coaches and so forth. Do you anticipate him having input in the decision? Sure. Um, so two questions. One, uh, I want to go as quickly as I can. Um, you know, we didn't let much time elapse between uh, Larry and, and Mac Brown. Um, we won't let much time elapse here because, you know, people are in the portal, people are transferring. It, it's very important, but it's, it's more important to get it right and, and to be comfortable with the decision that we make than expediency. But uh, we will go very quickly. And, and try to get something done. I'd hate to give you a date and not hit it, but it'll be soon. And then, um, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, Bob, go ahead. Well, Aaron, what was the second half of it? Just, you've got a guy, you've got a coach in Roy Williams that knows right. the industry and so forth. Would he have input in the decision? Absolutely. And he shared his opinion with me a lot and he shared it with the chancellor. So in discussing, you know, his future, in not coaching, we say, well, okay, well, what's next? Obviously, you've all the things that you said. I mean, he's got enormous um, experience. He uh, knows everybody in the profession, 
And so he gave us his thoughts. We continue to have an exchange and I'll continue to, to ask for his help along the way. He's uh, one of the many Carolina alums that is in the business and understands the importance of this job. So certainly we'll use him. Thank you. CL, then Andrew Jones. Bubba, uh, how important do you feel uh, head coaching, prior head coaching experience will be in this decision? Is this thing where uh, that is a requirement, a prerequisite for it, or is there some leeway to uh, to maybe take a chance or think outside the box? Um, it is important. Um, I've always said that my preference is uh, I'd, I'd like to hire people that have done it before, head coaches, but it, it's not a requirement. Um, there's a lot of different attributes that uh, people bring to the table that need to be considered for it. And, you know, if there was a perfect person out there, you know, I'd like to find them, but there's going to be pros and cons of every, every person out there, whether they have a Carolina connection or not, have been a head coach or not, um, whether they played in the NBA or not, whether they've coached in the NBA or not, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of different qualifications for a job. And as I mentioned, you know, it's the time, it's the circumstance, it's the right person at the right time. Right, Roy talked about being the right man for the job. And uh, I do think there are periods of time where certain attributes are going to outweigh another, but we'll consider all of them. Andrew Jones and Brendan. Uh, hey, Bubba. Roy mentioned today that on Sunday you tried talking him out of it. So you've known about this for several days. Have you already begun the process of reaching out to some people uh, or were you waiting until after the announcement became public? And if so, how many people have you contacted? Great question. Um, no, and I, you know, typically I would like to reach out to reach people, but, you know, I, Roy wanted to um, wait and tell the team first, tell his staff and hold the press conference. So I didn't think it was appropriate to tell anybody. I, mean, I didn't tell my wife until yesterday. And I, you know, she's not home, but I flew home from Indianapolis yesterday. In fact, I called my assistant and said, uh, I need a flight home on Wednesday, but I can't tell you why. And, um, and so, no, I kept it in strict confidence and I uh, started getting, receiving phone calls and making phone calls today. Brendan and Taylor. Hey, Bubba, thanks for taking the time to do this. Uh, sort of a, an additional link onto that last question, but coaches and, and sometimes athletic directors talk about having a so-on-so list of potential names, you know, just in case something ever happened with somebody just wondering, um, did you have that list? Is that something that you and coach Williams before he expressed his recommendation? Is that something that you had um, previously thought about or had started working on at any point? You know, I, I'm not one that keeps a written list, but I'm, a, I'm it's like you guys. I mean, you know, it's a very public business. We all know who the best coaches are in college basketball. We know the best coaches in the NBA. I mean, it, it, you know, if I could pull Jeannie out of a bottle and say, hey, look at this, you know, John Wooden's come back to life and he's going to be our head coach. I mean, it, it's a pretty, pretty narrow set of people when you say you've got the, the you know, the best job in college sports. You know, you guys, you, you know who everyone would have in mind. I'm not going to try to trick anybody and say there's this sleeper out there. I mean, that, that's the reality of, of the business that we're in. Um, and, and so, of, of course, I paid attention. You know, I actually paid attention a lot more probably when I was at Tulsa and Ball State because we turned over coaches all the time. Coaches don't turn over at Carolina. So you get plenty of time to think about it. You got a lot of time to think and less time to act. So I better start acting pretty quickly here. Taylor, then Greg Barnes. Hey, Bubba. With how important the Carolina basketball family is to the program, how is this coaching staff, I mean, how is this coaching search going to be different than potentially anything you've ever been a part of? Well, as I said, I mean, this is the most iconic basketball program in the country. And I'm involved in making the decision on who's going to be the next head coach. And the history and tradition and legacy uh, is really important. Winning is important. And we're facing a different environment moving forward between some of the things that were mentioned today with uh, the transfer portal uh, being wide open, over 1,200 people in it right now, name, image, and likeness coming down the path. Um, it's going to be a very different environment in coaching, recruiting, and retaining students to play on the team. And, um, and, and quite frankly, college basketball is better when North Carolina is good, and we need to be good. And we're committed to being good. And uh, we have to find the right leader that uh, 
can maintain the standards that we've uh, become accustomed to. Greg Barnes and Jeff Goodman. Hey, Bubba, along those lines, uh, you've got a lot of fans who want somebody strictly from the Carolina family. And I know there's also the, uh, the case to be made for, for people who appreciate the Carolina program and what it stands for without having direct ties. Uh, do, you, do you have a requirement in terms of what you're looking for with their, their knowledge and understanding of, of what Carolina basketball is? No, I don't. Um, you know, it's the same way with head coaching experience, Carolina uh, experience. You know, I want to get the best coach for us right now. And, um, you know, if, if one may be a benefit for somebody and it might be a strike against somebody else. But, you know, again, it's really trying to find who is the right leader for this program right now with, with our student athletes that we have on campus and the kids that we're trying to recruit. And, we, you know, we're going to pursue championships and who's the best person to, to lead us in that direction. Jeff Goodman and David Teal. Bubba, first of all, uh, appreciate you doing this. This is a pretty rare territory for, for an athletic director to do. So honestly, appreciate the candor. Um, as far as the, the, the Carolina family, do you think, and again, it may not be able to answer this, do you think you will vet all the Carolina people first and then move outside the family? I mean, obviously we know the Carolina family is so important to all the Carolina players. Is that kind of the first step? And then you move on to some of the other big name guys that, that you might go after? Yeah, great question. And I, but I don't think I have an order, Jeff, you know, I, you know, I, I haven't, you know, I, I've been in college athletics for a long time, you know, haven't, been directly involved, certainly in hiring a basketball coach of this profile, but I do have a lot of good relationships. So I don't have an, an order, yeah. but I do want to touch base with as many former Carolina players as possible. I started that this morning and reaching out to former players and getting their thoughts and, and ideas. And, um, and that's been really helpful. Um, you know, again, I've been here almost 10 years and I feel like I really understand Carolina, but I, I don't, as I don't have that deep, thing that, that Roy has and I and I haven't been here my entire career and so I, I really want to hear from them and get their thoughts because they have built this program those players and those students have built this program to what it is along with the coaches and I value that and um, I want to do right by them but I also think that I don't want to be myopic I don't want to be myopic on as I said the head coaching thing I don't want to be myopic on the Carolina experience because they both bring great value in different ways David Teal then Ross Martin Bubba Roy mentioned during his presser what a unique time this is obviously given Carolina's brand this is a unique search but in this pandemic, is it your preference to meet with candidates in person or would you anticipate trying to do this virtually? That's a great question as well. Um, you know, and, and, you know, a year ago, I never possibly would have considered doing it virtually, <laughs> but uh, the whole everyone's life has changed in a year. Um, I always my first preference would be to meet in person. Um, many of the people that... Uh, I, I, would, I already know. So there's a little bit of a more of a familiarity to say, okay, we could probably do it by Zoom because we know each other. Um, but I, there's nothing better than face to face in my mind. So haven't really decided yet, David, in which way we're going to go with that. Certainly start out with phone calls and Zoom. If we feel like we've got to be in person, that would probably be the, the next step. Got time for about three or four more questions. Ross Martin, then Josh Graham. Hey Bubba, um, when you're you're looking for this 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 next coach and looking at qualities for that coach, what, what qualities are very important to you in particular for this coach? And, and especially considering the kind of the changing landscape of college basketball right now with all the different aspects to the job. Well, the number one thing for me is integrity. I mean, you know, college athletics, basketball is has really been a lightning rod for a lot of different issues. And, you know, your, your reputation gets so damaged so quickly, and we have to have somebody that has impeccable integrity, somebody that really values the student experience, the educational experience of what we do. We've got great debate on that as well, whether it's, you know, pay for play, name, name image and likeness, the transfer portal. You know, I, I'm totally committed to education, committed to the educational experience. And I, I know that a lot of people laugh at that, but 
I, I firmly believe in, I firmly believe in the, the broad-based programming. And to me, all of that ties together. And, you know, we started the complete Carolina program. Yeah, we want one and done players, but we, you know, we don't want a whole roster of them. We want kids that go two, three, four years. We want to be able to have the one and done guys come back and finish their degrees. And so I, I am completely ingrained in, in higher education. And I want somebody that shares that same vision that that's what it's about. The rules are gonna change, the eligibility standards are gonna change, the use of agents are gonna change, but we want kids that are gonna to wanna to come to college, begin their athletic and academic career, and depending on which way it goes for them, we want them to have a great end result, which is a great life, whether it's a professional player finishing later or finishing all four years and getting a degree. So that's what I'm looking for, somebody that's committed to an educational experience for our kids. Josh, then Davis Wallace. Uh, I wanted to ask you about two quick things. You keep mentioning Carolina luminaries that might be a part of the search. Any names you can bring up specifically? And secondly, I wanted to know, I want more details about the search at, or uh, meeting with Roy back on Sunday itself because he said during the press conference a few times today that he just felt he wasn't enough. And I think his exact quote was, I just wasn't getting it done. Did you agree with that assessment or can you tell me a little bit about that conversation? Um, sure. Um, so the, the luminaries, I, I would like to contact every, every player that's ever played. I won't be able to do that, but the ones that, um, that you all know, I have reached out to many of them already and I will continue to reach out to all of them. I mean, I, I, I want to talk about multi-generational players. I, I want to talk to and have talked to some of these names. I don't you know, so I, whether it's Marcus Page, Luke May, Cam Johnson, Phil Ford, Eric Montross. I mean, multi-generational people that have been at Carolina that have a vested interest in this program, have built this program, um, plus many more. And I've talked to many more than the ones I just mentioned. Um, and so I'll be reaching out to all of them. As it relates to the conversations with Roy, I mean, you know, we talked, I think every night, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I think for probably over an hour. And, you know, he kept talking about, you know, he's felt like he was the right man for the job and he feels like he's a good coach, but he wasn't getting the outcome that uh, Carolina wanted. He wasn't um, getting the kids to do what he was hoping they would do. And he put all the blame on himself, as he said today. And, um, and, you know, I was talking about the pandemic. I was talking about, it was a different experience. You know, you know, it's, let's, let's keep trying, let's keep working through this. And uh, the, uh, probably, unfortunately, the more I talked to him, I think the more convinced he was, he, he was going to retire. And so I said, well, all right, I'm not doing any good. How about if you talk to the chancellor? So uh, I was out of town. So they met in person and he tried to do the same thing. But uh, as, as somebody was, one of the kids told me, so, you know, every once in a while, a coach can be a bit stubborn. And um, so he, uh, he was committed. And, and today was the outcome of that uh, decision that he made. Davis, then Isaac, and then Luke. And that's it. Davis, then Isaac, then Luke. Thank you, Bubba. Hey, Bubba. As you know, when Roy was hired at Kansas, he was, quote unquote, a no-name assistant coach. I was just wondering what percentage of your decision process will be based on current assistant coaches throughout the country and in the NBA? Uh, again, I'll consider anybody that we think can help us continue to lead this program, be successful, win championships, attract great students that want to be here. Um, uh, I'm wide open to that, but I, as I said before, my, I do have a preference for hiring head coaches, particularly at this level. I mean, this, this is not an easy job and um, X's and O's are part of the job, but, but there are so many other parts to it that are really important to be a successful program. And, but it's not saying that a, an assistant coach can't do it. Um, but I, I want people to be successful and I want to hire people to, and put them in a position to be successful. And so that's really what I'm looking for. Isaac. Bubba, thank you so much for your time. Two very quick things for you. First of all, after coach Smith, uh, we did have the transition to longtime assistant Bill Guthridge. And you talked about the head coaching experience. Obviously coach Robinson brings that and is a longtime assistant. Uh, is that maybe one of the pivots? And I was also wondering, personally, you said you came home from Indianapolis. 
Uh, so will you head back for the final four or with this new uh, event, will you be staying in Chapel Hill now? Yeah, no, once I was in the, uh, in the bubble. I was up there from March 9th until yesterday. And once you leave the bubble, you can't go back unless you have seven consecutive tests and all. I, the tournament will be over by that point. Um, so I left. In fact, I didn't tell anybody on the committee where I was going. So I, uh, snuck out of there and I got a couple of texts when I missed dinner last night, but, um, actually I told Dan Gabbett, but I didn't tell anybody else. So I wanted to make sure that I was again, trying to keep Roy's confidence in the, in what he was trying to do. Um, but you're right. I mean, I, I will certainly talk to our staff. I think our, we have a great staff. I think, uh, coach Robinson's outstanding coach, uh, Davis is outstanding. Brad Frederick, Sean May, Eric Hoots, I mean, Kendall Marshall, we have a great, great staff and they're important to uh, our success, whether they're the head coach or the assistant coach. And, um, and I'm certainly respectful of all the work and the career that they've had to date. And uh, we'll talk to them about what their aspirations are as well. Last question, Luke. Hey, Bobo, thanks for taking the time to do this. You're part of one of the more favorable hires with Mac Brown that's turned out to be wildly successful. What are your main lessons and takeaways through that process that, well, not, you know, the same sport, but you're applying to a similar process? Well, I, I tell you one thing that I, I've, I've learned that um, any good athletic department has great coaches and we, we better get a great coach because this is our premier program. And so it, it, it really is a coach driven program and we have to find the guy that can lead us and you know mac had a, a relationship with north carolina he had been here before that was helpful he's an incredible communicator the uh, folks that have played for him think the world of him the players that are on his team now think the world of him because he he's such a good communicator and he he provides things that are needed and necessary and they feel good about the effort it takes to be successful because they know that he really cares about them. And same true is true with Roy. There's not a single person in that locker room that's ever played for him that he won't do anything humanly possible for them and for their health, their safety, their well being. He is totally committed to the person. So that's a, a thing that um, I, I think is the hallmark of our great coaches, whether it's our soccer coaches, lacrosse coaches, they're outstanding individuals that really care about the person. And I think, again, that's, that's what we're going to try to find. Well, thanks, everybody. We set a record today with about 80 people. That was a single season Zoom mark, and we didn't break.